Hi, my name is Rod and welcome to the Orca Boat Shop. I do repairs, restorations on small wooden boats, build new boats, and uh, sell online lots of parts and pieces for home builders who are doing either new builds or restorations of their own. So please check us out on uh, the website at orcaboats.ca with a link right down there in the description. Now that all of the epoxy is fully cured on the kayak here, inside and out, and all the little parts and pieces that I installed in the last video, it's now time to clean this up and get it ready for varnish. So the first step on, in sort of knocking down any bits of rungs and things, now as much as I really try to stay tidy and all, and not have messes and drips here and there, I always seem to get some drips, whether from the bottom of the cup or, or you know, not paying attention when I'm turning my head. The first thing I like to use is a little sure form here or sur form. It'll knock down the runs if you scrape with the run. And then I'm going to move to my cabinet scraper. So I just run my hands over the boat and find these little runs. Here's a little drip down here. I just knock it off real fast. Looking for any more. Got a quite a large one here. I guess when I epoxy on this side, I didn't realize it's running over the right side. Now if the epoxy's dripped onto fully cured and shiny uh, uh, epoxy underneath, sometimes the little drip will just actually pop right off because it's not bonded that well. Next up will be the cabinet scraper. I'm just going to sharpen mine here. So if you've never used a cabinet scraper before or a card scraper before, it really is just an extremely hard piece of sheet metal and uh, we're going to put a little burr on here so it's not scraping like a paint scraper. Use a file to just clean up the edge. Kind of maybe go the other direction here. Then we take a burnishing tool and this tool is even harder than that steel, although very brittle. I've dropped mine so you can see that I've broken the handle off of it but it's still good. I'm going to push down really hard on here until it runs smoothly. And the cutting edge is the little burr that's met by mushrooming, mushrooming, oh that's a hard one to say, mushrooming over the uh, edge of it. We'll take it to the boat and we're going to use that little bird edge as a scraper. Now I could just sand this whole boat but that's noisy and dusty and this will take off a lot more material a lot faster. So we're just going to use this. We find the right angle here and it will shave off the high spots. You can either push it or pull it. You do find one of those runs that I cleaned up, we go with the run in the direction. Because going over top of it's not gonna knock it down that fast. My cabinet scrapers are from Lee Valley Tools. There's two thicknesses. The thicker the steel, the more coarse or uh, uh, you know, more material to remove. Um, you get a set of three, it's really nice. There's two, I'm sorry, one that is basically flat if you want to scrape a cabinet top. Uh, this one, I mean, you know, and most of the things that I, I'm scraping is, is uh, rounded boats, the inside or the outside. So this cabinet scraper used to have, you know, it still does, has this curve on it. It has a slightly less curve on this side. I've used it so often and sharpened it, it's actually now concave, which is fine for the outside of the boat. This edge here would be good for the inside of the boat. It's saved me hundreds of dollars in sandpaper over the years and certainly has reduced the noise and the dust in the shop. And just to give you an idea of how much it's saved me, I've been doing this for 22 years. I believe this is only my second set of Lee Valley uh, cabinet scrapers that I've purchased in the 22 years. Once I've got over the whole hull with the cabinet scraper, it's time to hit it up with the, sand, the sander, which is a lot noisier. I've got my earplugs in, I'm going to mask up for dust. I have my vacuum system, which I, I don't use the Festool vacuum system. I just don't have room in the shop for another piece of equipment that's going to sit on the floor 
uh, when it's not in use. So I actually have a vacuum attached to the wall and I've got it on a little remote control so I can turn it off and on when needed. I'm going to start off with uh, 120. I love this uh, granite sandpaper from Festool. I think that one's used. just to get rid of some low spots. I don't want to just keep sanding until it's perfectly smooth because I might be uh, digging in a little bit deep in some areas. Got to remember I've got six ounce glass on here, four coats of epoxy, minimal amount of epoxy as possible, getting it on as smooth as possible so there's as little sanding as possible, but I also want to not be cutting into the fiberglass. sanded up to 220 wet and it's nice and dry and warm in here it's about to time to begin applying the varnish so what I'm using uh, on most of my boats now is this uh, product by Pettit uh, Paints it's called Sea Gold and it is actually a water-based varnish uh, it comes in satin and or gloss although I've never really found the gloss to be that glossy uh, the purpose of this really is is that I can get on three maybe four coats on a warm day all without any sanding between coats. Um, you know, as much as we want to have a nice uh, deep finish on here, this is not the varnish for that. But it does have the UV inhibitors in there, so we can start to build up some uh, UV resistance to protect the epoxy. So it's easy to apply, just use a foam brush. Being water-based, I can wash the foam brush and use it a couple of times. So I'm just gonna start down the end and it dries very quickly to a nice smooth finish. I'm moving through the process of varnishing the final coats on the kayak. I used the Sea Gold, which was the uh, no sand water-based varnish. I ended up with four coats on the deck and the hull out of that one liter. And now I'm working through multiple coats of the high gloss. I'm expecting this to be the last coat. So all I'm doing is scuffing up the previous coat with either 120 sandpaper if there's some areas that are a bit rough or 220 just to scuff it all up and take the shine off. Then I'm just going to use my vacuum to pick off the heavy dust and then I'll wipe it down to get all the, all, the, all the finer dust off. Following the vacuuming, I just take a fairly clean cloth and just wipe it down and get the cloth under areas here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cloth out several times and give it a good shake outside and then come back in and do this again maybe two or three times over the whole boat. Working in a small shop like this always poses a bit of a problem in trying to get the dust out. I've got sanders and table saws, so during this last week of varnishing, really I've done no other work because I'm trying to make sure that all of the dust, as much as possible, is out of the air. And part of the way I do that is just to take a spray bottle, which is set on a very fine mist, 
and two or three times a day I've just been spraying the air to bring the dust down to the ground using a wet uh, a broom to sweep up the dust that settles and then continually doing that every day. Now I haven't done it today because I don't want moisture in the air so this is the final coat. For the high gloss top coats I'm using uh, Captain's Varnish 1015 by Pettit Paints. This will be the fourth and final coat on top of the four uh, base coats of the non-sanding varnish. Now I am by no means a professional uh, bright work uh, specialist so I've over the years I've tried different methods, you know, good quality brushes, uh, foam brushes. What I've found to work the best is going to be the roll and tip method with a foam roller and a foam brush. So the final step in getting the dust off will be to use an actual tack cloth to lift up any of the fine dust that's coming out of the air. And I want to get my varnish on as fast as I can before more dust settles on the boat. So I don't want to wipe too hard. These cloths are just sort of cheese cloths wrapped in or uh, impregnated with sort of a beeswax. I don't want to rub too hard to get uh, any residue of beeswax on the boat. Hopefully if we're fairly clean, the cloth is not turning white with dust. And the foam rollers that I've found to be working the best is either the West System rollers, which are very uh, thin, uh, high density foam, or these little uh, white foam rollers, I call them, you know, people ask me what I said, are the ones that look like little hot dogs. But, uh, you know, they'll, they'll nicely get a good coat on there, and then I will tip it off with a foam brush. I'm already inside the cockpit because i got to lean on the boat to get inside there. And uh, I'll just start at the stern end of the boat here and work my way down to the bow. So how much varnish? I dip it in and just kind of roll it enough so it's not going to drip off, and then put it on. I mean, multiple thin coats is always easier. However, I find though if I put it on a little bit too thin, that I just end up with streaks in there from the uh, foam brush here. So I want to be able to just, this is a very gentle touch and just working. And I try to always brush from a dry area into the fresh varnish and then lift off. Now you get a little bit of tiny little look like air bubbles in there, but they will disappear in a few minutes as the uh, varnish settles. Try not to roll too large of an area at once, otherwise I've got a sort of that wet edge that I got to keep up with. And of course this being the final coat I don't want any varnish dripping down onto the hull so I will give it a gentle brush on the hull side as well just to make sure that I'm catching any possible drips. Especially with the roller on a sharp edge of the shear line, may end up having varnish squishing out of the foam roller and going down the side of the boat. And then before moving on too far, I just use the glare of the ceiling lights to see if I've left any what we call holidays or spots that somehow, even though you've rolled five different directions with a roller, Somehow, you still may seem to miss a little tiny spot. On kayaks I always leave the cockpit for last, just the combing rim. I've got enough varnish on this roller here that I don't want to be putting on too much that I squish it off and have a drip into the bottom of the or the opening here. So I'm just very gently getting it onto the boat. And the Scana HV kayak is all complete and ready to be crated up and shipped. So I've got the deck rigging in, I've made uh, the seat out of the high density foam with the backrest, 
and installed the hatches. So let's look and see how the hatches are uh, held in place with the internal bungee system. Each hatch we just have the little uh, pull tab here to lift it up. So uh, there's enough given the uh, internal bungee system to lift it up enough to reach in and just push the bungee cord off of the hooks on this side. And I just like to pull it towards me a little bit just so that this is not rubbing constantly on the air. And we can undo the hook and we're off. And we've got the leash on here so that this can hang down without being stepped on or certainly not getting blown off in the wind for whatever reason. Got the double gasket on here, one layer of gasket on the, ins uh, the inside of the rim and one on the uh, exterior of the hatch lid and it nicely fits down in there. Putting it back on, reverse process, reach across, hook it up on those two, reach under, find that one, slide your fingers over, hook it on and just don't let it slam down but just allow that to place it and those double gaskets kind of holds everything in place. I hope you've enjoyed this series following along as I build this for the customer in Nova Scotia. So what's up next? I'm not too sure right now. I'm kind of thinking uh, maybe I'll get into looking at building one of those little Ken Douglas rowboats that I did a series of videos on the lofting, uh, taking the lines and lofting of that boat. I do have some other projects in the works. There's, all, there's always work around the shop here. but. And as always, thank you very much for watching. So if you're considering maybe having a, a small boat built for you, you can contact me via my website at www.orcaboats.ca. So thank you very much for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next projects which are going to happen uh, soon. Hey, don't run off just yet. Consider becoming a subscriber. Maybe hit the like button if you like this video. And uh, if you click that bell button, you'll be notified of any future videos.